Ukrainian military officials say Russian occupiers in eastern Ukraine are avoiding head-on combat with Bradley infantry fighting vehicles, even as they say they are fighting depleted Kiev forces. Newsweek reports, the Russians know what a Bradley is. They don't want to meet this machine head-on. I probably wouldn't want to either if I were in their place said the commander of the Ukrainian armored vehicles on the Christmas, a soldier from the 47th Mechanized Brigade. Ukraine's 47th Mechanized Brigade was deep in the fighting in eastern Ukraine. The brigade was the only known operator of Bradley infantry fighting vehicles, as well as American M1 Abrams main battle tanks. According to Pentagon documents, the U.S. has sent more than 300 Bradleys to Ukraine, as well as four support vehicles. In January 2024, the commander of the 47th Mechanized Brigade told Newsweek that Russian soldiers were afraid to launch operations when they know they're going to be facing Bradleys. Armored vehicles and tanks on both sides are wary of artillery fire from the other side. They must also keep a close eye on drone strikes. FPV drones can damage parts of a tank, including immobilizing the vehicle. Russian artillery is always working to find the Bradley, the military says. But the main problem is the kamikaze drones. There are more and more of them, and the enemy is very dynamically developing this area, the brigade noted. Currently, the fighters of the 47th Brigade are stationed west of Avdiivka. Fatigue is what you can see on the faces of our soldiers, the brigade noted. Russia has been slowly but steadily gaining territory in eastern Ukraine since the beginning of the year, claiming Avdiivka in February 2024 and moving west in the following months. Moscow's forces have inched closer to the strategic defense town of Pokrovsk, and Ukraine has repeatedly reported heavy clashes along that section of the front line. Russia opened a new front in northeastern Ukraine in the Kharkiv region in early May, and Ukraine said the new offensive was aimed at straining Kyiv's resources in the east. On Sunday, the Russian Defense Ministry said its forces had captured Novoselovka per via, a village west of Avdiivka and southeast of Pokrovsk. Analysts at the Institute for the Study of War have noted that in order to use the F-16s that have arrived in Ukraine, the defense forces should focus on defeating Russian air defense in the Russian rear and on occupied Ukrainian territories with Western long-range weapons. Ukraine reported that it had received the first batch of US-made F-16 fighter jets. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky confirmed the arrival of the F-16 aircraft in Ukraine on the 4th of August. In this regard, he especially thanked Denmark, the Netherlands and the United States. The ISW continues to assess that Ukraine will need a substantial number of F-16 jets in order to field them at the scale necessary for Ukraine to succeed in integrating fixed-wing aircraft into its wider air defense umbrella. Ukraine will also notably need to continue efforts to target Russian air defense assets within the Russian rear and in occupied Ukraine with Western-provided long-range weapons to enable its use of F-16 jets. Experts have noted that Russian military bloggers have responded to the arrival of F-16 jets by attempting to minimize their potential impact on the battlefield. This response undercuts Russian propaganda efforts which have sought to depict the delivery of F-16s and other Western weapons as a critical and unacceptable red line. Several Russian bloggers have stated that the Western and Ukrainian media are exaggerating the arrival of the F-16s to deflect attention from setback on the battlefield. Many bloggers quickly shifted their focus to how Russian forces would aim to target and eliminate the aircraft. In the Russian media space, commentators and officials often contend that the supply of Western arms to Ukraine constitutes a red line which, if breached, would necessitate a heightened Russian response. Nevertheless, Russia has consistently shown that its invocation of red lines is a tactic to deter the West from providing additional military support to Ukraine. Western and Ukrainian strategies have crossed these self-declared Russian red lines multiple times since the full-scale war began without provoking a substantial Russian reaction. Statements from Russian military bloggers indicate that this trend will likely continue with the deployment of F-16s.